start here. Yes. Once again, good morning, class. And we're carrying on with the discussion of the chapter that is the sermon at Banaras. Yes, so can you just uh, tell me here what uh, is a sermon? What's a sermon? Yes? Can I have your answers, please? Can you tell me? What's a sermon? So it's a preaching, it's a lecture with a message, with a very important message. So we tell it through by giving an incident or any anecdotes are told. And uh, at the end, it is a message which is conveyed. Isn't it? Right? Now here, what is it? What do we know about Gautam Buddha? What do we know about the sermon at Banaras? Why is it so important? Yes, can I get your answers, please? Can I get your answers? So why was it important? Because it was the first sermon which Buddha gave after his enlightenment. And what happened to him? That he left his uh, home, he left all the goods and luxuries and went on to seek enlightenment, peace, truth. So he saw these incidents happening. He saw a sick man, a dead man, an old man, and he saw a monk, right, begging for arms. And then uh, one day he saw so many things happening. And because he was there so sheltered and protected in his life, he did not know what the outside world was like. He saw the world suffering. He saw the sufferings in this world. And uh, yes, so he did not, uh, you know, like realize that why is it this happening? And he did not realize that in this world, suffering is also there. So we have pain, we have happiness, we have sorrows, we have our ups and downs in life. So he left his home and went in search of enlightenment. Then he came and sat under this tree, right? Yes, Gaya, and uh, there he got enlightenment and, and where he gave his first sermon that was on the banks of the Ganges at Banaras. And as we know, Banaras or Varanasi is said to be one of the holiest places. And where people, yes, they go for a pilgrimage also there. People want that the last rites should be done over there to get a salvation, to get eternal peace. So it is there a very important place of pilgrimage, right? And here, this is what he talked about. So what was the story that uh, happened was, Yes, so it was about the lady. She lost her son. Son was young and uh, he was not uh, saved. He passed away. But the lady, because of her love for her son, she was not ready to believe. And so she went there and she wanted someone who could bring him back to her life. And he went over, she went to one man and he said that I know who the person is there. So you go to Sakya Muni or the enlightened one or to Buddha and he will tell you. So what did Buddha tell her to do? Yes, what did he tell her to do? That you will bring mustard seed. And she said, yeah, happily, I'll bring it easily. I can get it. But there was a condition. What was the condition? Where should those mustard seeds come from? They should come from a house where there has no been any or loss. No death has occurred. Right? So it should be where a father, mother, daughter, sister, no one has died over there in that house which is impossible. Once again, this is the bitter reality of life that once we come on this earth, yes, we are going to leave this one day, right? And uh, yes, death is inevitable. We cannot avoid it. We cannot delay it. We can't run away from it. We are mortals. We are just here for a short period of time on this earth. And in the short period of time, we can attachments, we are there with our near and dear ones and uh, we uh, like, uh, yes, don't want to lose anyone. It's so difficult here coming out of that. So, but the lady, she did not realize this, but you know, when she was there going from house to house, asking for mustard seeds and as she was sitting on the banks, uh, then what did she see? She saw that the lights were coming on in the houses. Right, so these my light they were putting on the dia people were lighting, and when it became very dark, everything 
you know, like the lights were put out, everything became dark. Then she realized that it's just like that we are also an earthen vessel like that. So we have this light, we have this flame inside us. But yes, after some time, this flame will get extinguished. And our journey on this earth will come to an end. It's a beautiful message, you know, yes. It's a beautiful message here and a very beautiful comparison, the simile here that she's talking. And yes, let's start here. The Buddha said the life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief and combined with pain. Mortals, things that come to an end. And as long as we are alive, we have our problems, we have our worries, we have so many things to be concerned about. For there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying. It's inevitable. Something that cannot be avoided. After reaching old age, there is death. Of such a nature are living beings. This is what we are like. We die. As ripe fruits are early in danger of falling, so mortals, when born, are always in danger of death. So we are the, like fruits, what happened? It's on the branches. And when the fruit is ripened, it will fall off the branch. And just like that, where we have lived our life, where we are ready to leave this world and uh, we go away. Right? This is what? So mortals, when born, are always in the danger of death. But one thing is there, that because we know death is inevitable. Does it mean we stop living? Does it mean we live constantly in the fear of death? No, we, we should live our life to the fullest. We should not be scared constantly living in the fear of death and we will not be able to enjoy this blessed life that we have, okay? And uh, yes, so here, as all earthen vessels made by the potter end in being broken, so is the life of mortals. Earthen vessels, you know, your brain, you keep water in it, a picture that you have, or you have a flower pot, sometimes, yes, so it just falls and breaks. Like that, our life is over. Both young and adult, both those who are fools and those who are wise, all fall into the power of death, all are subject to death. Everyone will pass away. Of those who overcome by death, depart from life, a father cannot save his son, nor kinsmen their relations. So no matter how powerful, how strong a person is, we cannot escape this. And we have seen, you know, we are going through this very strange time in our lives. And yes, you will be there telling this story to the future generations that these two, three years in our life, everything was so unexpected. And uh, last year, so much we have seen happening around us. So much of devastation and it was so shocking, right? And that uh, one day, yes, a person is with you. And then the next day you realize that because of this pandemic, which has taken away so many young souls, so many young lives have been taken away, right? Any life that is lost, it is there we have to feel sad about it. We grieve the loss of that. Of those who overcome by death, depart from life, father cannot save his son, nor kinsman their relations. Kinsmen, relatives, your, those who are related to you, your near and dear ones, they cannot save their relations. Mark, while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply, one by one mortals are carried off like an ox that is led to the slaughter. So we are carried away, just like an animal is there, led to the slaughter. Right? So like that also, one by one, a turn is going to come. So the world is afflicted with death and decay. Therefore, the wise do not grieve, knowing the terms of the world. So those who are wise, they don't cry. They don't grieve. They know that this is the reality of life. No matter how strong we are, no matter how many lessons we learn, but when it comes to such a moment in our lives, no one can be strong. No one can be strong. Not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind. On the contrary, his pain will be the greater and his body will suffer. He will make himself sick and pale. Yet the dead are not saved by this lamentation. No, you keep on grieving for them. They're not going to come back. You're going to make them, 
you know what hurt only so it is better let's pray for their peace let us pray for our strength so that we're able to deal with that loss he who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation and complaint and he who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind he who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and be blessed right so we have to no matter how yes we have to take out you know like lamentation pashtava rona everything we have to stop all this so that yes to get the peace of mind not only for ourselves but for our near and dear ones okay right yes here yeah and we should be saying time by time look at you shameless people it's your board exam that you have to study here we don't have time here we are worried about the completion of your syllabus how are we going to put two things to you all and look at you all here very brave you people i must say you know yeah being with you all it gives you a lot of positivity isn't it yes yeah, so you you get that that's very nice okay keep up that spirit but yeah okay now let's do the question answers and i am going to ask you to raise your hand to give me the answer and if you don't want to speak up you can text but i want you to give me the answer when his son dies his son got me goes from house to house what does she ask for does she why not yes what does kesa got me want yes she wants the mustard seeds yes uh, right uh, she asked for medicine yeah but she doesn't have this medicine right now why not because nobody could bring that person back to life kesa got me again goes from house to house after she speaks with the buddha what does she ask for the second time around yes the first time she asked for medicine she asked can someone bring her son back to life second time is when she asked for the mustard seeds she could have got the mustard seeds but there was a condition yes so got the buddha had given her a condition that yes uh, along with the mustard seeds this is the condition that has to be there what does kissa got me understand the second time that she failed to understand the first time was this what the buddha wanted her to understand what did she understand the first time first time she was just going give me medicine please please bring my son back to life second time she was given a task also yeah you get the mustard seeds but only from this house she went to one house second house third house next one by one what did she learn that no there is no house in this you know like world that has been spared what death right so everyone has experienced it everyone has lost a near and dear one so this was a very very important way of teaching a lesson isn't it right so yes so he taught her a very important lesson but see everybody is suffering everybody has suffered this loss you are not the only one it is inevitable you can't avoid it why do you think kissa gotimi understood this only the second time in what way did the buddha teach her understanding who would like to speak anybody would like to speak you can i can unmute you yes you want to then you can text me the answer if you want to so why did she understood the second time because there was a condition for taking the mustard seeds and in this very simple way gotam buddha taught her an important lesson of life okay how do you usually understand the idea of selfishness do you agree with kissa gotami that she was being selfish in her grief what is selfish yes here how can one be selfish in grief so be selfish you are you you think about yourself only and generally we are there thinking about ourselves when you want to you know work hard we have an exam or a test or you know you have to do something in life or we we are concerned about ourselves we think about ourselves we think about our family and all but in grief also she was selfish yes so she was not concerned about anybody else she was just thinking about her son and she was ready to do anything to bring her son back to life right so yes she was being selfish because she was not understanding the reality of life 
and she was thinking only about her son, right? And she was not thinking about the feelings of others. Okay, so it was that she learned a lesson also. Now here, the text here is written in some, you know, like uh, give the medicine for thy child. Yes, yeah, so give uh, medicine for my child. Yes, so she wanted to save her only child. Pray, tell me, I request you to tell me. So it's a very old fashioned way of writing. This are repaired to the Buddha. So she went back to him. There was no house, but someone had died in it. So, but that there was no house where death had not happened. Kinsmen, relatives, Mark, here, listen. Okay, right. Yes, yeah, I, I want you to go through these exercises and we'll discuss them. It's about grief. It's about understanding grief. Here it is, you know, what? Just read these and we'll discuss them tomorrow, okay? Yeah, here, let's see here. What are the feelings of grief? Although grief is unique and uh, personal, a broad range of feelings and behaviors are commonly experienced after the death of a near and dear one. 